Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. Our guest today, the first question, as always, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. So I'm Steph Caldwell. I lead business development for the West Coast at a company called Narrative Science. Um, we are a data storytelling company, so we help companies communicate and scale the way that they communicate around their data. Um, and then in addition to that, I am also the founder and author of Manifest Her. We are a women's community in Chicago, helping women connect and move forward towards their biggest dreams together. Oh, I like that. Thanks very much for doing that. Question number two, what's the best thing about working with a team? So I come from the standpoint of being a former athlete. I played rugby in college, which for anybody who knows the sport of rugby, it's a very intense sport. Um, and one of the things that I think is so exciting about working on a team or being on a team in any capacity is when you win, you win together. When you lose, you lose together. And there's this mutual accountability and mutual respect to all of the different parts working together towards those wins or those losses. Um, I've also been in like cross country and in track, and that's a very individual sport. Um, I think being an individual, you know, in a sport or on a team in general, like can be very isolating. I just published a book. I know how isolating the process of writing that book was. I know how liberating the process of editing and publishing that book was because I had a team around me kind of working towards that goal and that outcome together. Oh, that's great. Great insights. Question number three, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to get team members engaged. Tell me your thoughts. So I lead a team of three at Manifest. And what I've found is that if team members aren't engaged, there's a few layers to the, like their lack of engagement. To me, the foundational layer, layer one, is do they understand what this business is trying to do? Do they understand our mission and is it aligned to what they get value in in their own life like are they connected personally in some way to this mission it doesn't have to be a big way like i realize people get involved with businesses for different reasons one could be like financially right i know that being a management consultant will pad my bank account awesome like you're aligned in some way um but another and for me specifically where i am as a as a leader and an employee is i have to be personally aligned to the mission and the value that that company is providing in the market so if layer one is complete, then layer two is do they see their participation in moving that mission forward? Are they aligned to the, the tactical day-to-day -day things that they're doing to move that mission forward? We were chatting about this earlier, but if you're a customer support representative and you're taking phone calls and you're just taking phone calls but not realizing how you are contributing to this business being the number one in its industry and that being important because that changes humanity in some way, then you don't realize how taking that phone call that sucked actually contributes to the broader mission and impact that your company is trying to have on the world. So with that layer complete, I think layer three for me is everybody ticks based on some kind of um, thing that they really enjoy in their work. So there's been studies that have, have been shown that people um, kind of operate their best when they're in flow. What gets your individual employee into a flow state? How can you give them more of those opportunities? For people like me, I get in flow in high stakes presentation environments. Literally like being on a podcast and improvising my answers is where I hit flow. But I have an employee who would literally shut down and not be able to talk for the rest of the week if we put her in the same environment because that is not what gets her in flow. What really gets her excited is program management. How you go from A to Z and all of the different pieces in between and how you streamline those things. So how can I give people like me more opportunities to get in flow state and opportunities for her to get her more, you know, flow state in her day to day? Because ultimately, like that's, that is what keeps us going is knowing that we have more activities that we are really going to enjoy doing that align to what we like, um, what matters to our company and how that matters like in, in the broader world. I like that a lot. I like those three layers and being in the flow. Those are great comments. Question number four, what other piece of advice do you have for leaders of teams? Um, I think it goes back to like, we are all human at the end of the day. I think about this a lot. Um, in the, the workplace, we have triggers, right? Triggers that question our ability to deliver, our ability to be good humans, our ability 
to like play the roles that we want to play in our lives. And we don't always talk about the fact that like we are fully integrated humans that have business lives and non-business lives. And we pull all of that baggage into every conversation that we're having. If you kind of like separate out like work and personal life, you're not actually like going to have effective relationships with your team. So I would say like understand any baggage that they're carrying into any conversation and try to be empathetic in the same way that you'd want somebody to be empathetic to you to work together towards whatever outcome it is that you're looking to affect. Um, we're, we're humans. Let your people be people. Let them be the humans that they are and know that that is what is going to make them successful and ultimately make your entire team successful. That's great information. Thank you. Question number five, what other successful leaders of teams would you like to recognize that have had a positive influence in your life? So uh, my manager, I want to shout him out. His name is Ryan Kurt. He's absolutely extraordinary. I think that so much of what I've learned about people management has come directly from him. Specifically, I think he does an incredible job of falling on the sword for his people. Mm -hmm. If there is a mistake that's made, even if I was, you know, the um, going back to a sports analogy, right? Like when uh, somebody scores a goal in a soccer game, like it's easy for the goalie to blame themselves, but that means that offense went wrong, defense went wrong, and then the goalie was the last line of defense. I think great leaders um, take accountability to their participation in negative outcomes. And um, in many ways, don't want that, uh, that uh, recognition when really great outcomes happen. They want to like elevate and promote their team. So shout out to Ryan, who's taught me a ton of that. And then also shout out to uh, a woman on the narrative science marketing team. Her name is Anna Shenna, who I think is a real thought leader and not just a thought leader, but a person who's kind of um, figuring out her leadership style as she's doing it. And her team keeps expanding because she's an incredible leader. And, um, and she applies so many of those same philosophies to how she leads her team. Well, thank you so much for recognizing both of those individuals. They sound like great people. So thank you for- They are. For, for <laughs> them. Yeah. Nobody so what, hired. <laughs> <laughs> well, last question. Tell us about your first job. My first job. So I saw this question and I was thinking, I was like, well, I was technically like my dad's cleaning lady when I was 13, but that doesn't count. My first W-2 job, if you will, I worked at Potbelly Sandwiches and it was pop possibly like the best experience of my life. And to this day, one of my favorite jobs I ever had. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much, Steph, for being on the podcast today. How can people find you? Um, so I am at by Steph Caldwell pretty much on any platform, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. That is where I hang out. And uh, my team at Narrative Science can be found at Narrative Science pretty much anywhere. Um, as well as my team Manifest, uh, we are found at Manifest Her. Very good. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, you can find us on LinkedIn by searching Blue Sky Business Consulting. Thanks so much for joining us today. Have a great day.